Hello and welcome back to Pangarangiwan Developer. This is Bry and tutorial lang natin yung ating computer science rack. Last time, diniscuss natin yung uh, paano tayo nagbe-breakdown ng problems. From very large problems, how do we break it down to imperative knowledge, kumbaga. One way of doing that is yun nga, step by step. And another way, yung kusan tayo natapos, is yung pag-breakdown ng program natin into smaller programs. At sinabi nga natin, yung mga malit na program na yun, yun yung tinatawag natin na functions. So, ano yung functions? Well, kung... Uh, Familiar kayo sa math, kung marari, high school or college kayo, you should be familiar with the concept of a function, which is, ito yun, itsura ng mga function. Ano yung connection nito sa program? Well, functions have inputs, in this case, x and y. Meron siyang processing, kung marari, ito, x squared minus y. Then, meron siyang output, kung ano man yung re-return re na value nyan. For instance, ginawa mo x is equal to 2, y is equal to 1, lalabas yan is 3. Bago ang lalabas rin dyan, yung computer na ginamit natin ay yung utak mo. And you can see here, yung functions, they're essentially programs. Kaya medyo, at this point, medyo interchangeable pa siya. Bakit ba natin in-introduce yung konsepto ng functions na to? Well, in order for me to explain that, kailangan ko rin introduce another concept, which is yung black box. Yung mga functions natin, we could think of them as black boxes. So, Yung nasa loob niya, hindi natin nakikita kasi nasa box nga. Ang alam lang natin, when we have a function, alam lang natin na ano yung input niya, ano yung expected output niya, at ano yung expected na processing na ginagawa niya sa loob. Hindi natin kailangan malaman kung paano niya ginagawa yon. Okay, so ano yung point itong black box na to? Ano yung point of function function na to? Well, for one thing, ito yung ginagawa natin para i-overcome yung isang problema ng tao. Which is, napakalimitado yung memory niya. Napakalimitado yung kanyang processing power. Hindi kagaya ng computer na, well, in, in, walang problema sa kanya yung mga ganun bagay. Na mag-alala ng bagay or mag-proseso ng mga bagay. Problema kasi, pag ginawa natin purong step by step lahat ng mga bagay is, kunwari, given itong hypotenuse, get hypotenuse na to, kung purong step by step ang gagawin natin, kailangan nating gawin lahat ng kailangan gawin. For instance, kailangan natin isulat kung paano mag-add, kailangan natin isulat kung paano mag-multiply, and sa na ito, kailangan pa natin isulat kung paano mag-square root. However, in this approach, when we have to functions na black boxes, we could structure yung ating program, itong imperative knowledge na binibigay natin sa ating uh, computer, in such a way na yung different problems hiwalay. So, in this case, ginawa lang natin yung get hypotenuse na is made up of interconnected na functions. So, we assume, assuming na tama yung ginawa na dun sa function sa yun, we would assume na gagana itong main get hypotenuse nito. Then, once we've solved it that way, pwede na tayong mag-proceed dun sa other smaller functions. So, in this case, kung wala kang get square root, pwede kang gumawa na sarili mong get square root na functions. And, hiwalay na yun sa get hypotenuse. Again, ang problema kasi, pag purong step by step, hindi lang get hypotenuse ang pinoproblema mo. At the same time, pinoproblema mo yun lahat. Unlike here, pwede mong hiwalayin yung pinoproblema mo. So, in this case, kunwari, sige, gagawin ko muna ngayong umaga yung square root. Wala akong pakialam dun sa get hypotenuse na yan. Ngayong umaga, ito lang po problemahin ko. Then, mamayang hapon ko na problemahin yung get hypotenuse kung tama yung pagkakonect ako ng mga functions. So, ganun. Again, it allows us to structure our programs in such a way na mas kayang i-handle ng utak ng tao yun. That's another important part. Now, we're going to mention before we wrap this, this lesson up is when we write programs, it's, all, it's not just important para magawa tayo ng program na kayang isolve yung problems natin. 
it's also important for us to write programs na mas madaling intindihin, mas madaling i-analyze, mas madaling i-modify, i-maintain. And with yung functional approach, it's a lot easier than yung ating purely na step-by-step na approach. And this, ito yung quote para dyan, programs must be written for people to read and only incidentally for machines to execute. Ito yung hindi kadalasan sinasabi sa mga bagong developer at pagdating na lang ng ilang taon doon lang nila malalaman na mas importante pala na pag nagko-code ka, you also have to think about yung ating uh, yung tao. Kailangan hindi ganun ka-complicated yung ginagawa mong code. Kaya nga, hindi tayo purong step-by-step step lang. We also have to introduce other ways of creating programs. Okay, so yung code na yun galing sa SICP, one of my main uh, uh, source books for this course. Yung minention na natin, uh, wrap up na natin to, minention na kung ano yung step-by-step step at ano yung mga pag-break into functions. Yung step-by-step, step, that's what we typically, typically call imperative programming. Kasi purong imperative knowledge ang binibigay natin and it's step-by-step. Step, talagang down to the lowest detail. Yung opposite niya is yung functional programming. This is more declarative, kumbaga, kasi you're showing more of uh, yung mga... May, may pagka-declarative siya, pero later niya na problemahin. Pero yung point here is, in a functional programming setting, you break your program into smaller functions. You might think na dalawang separate ito na kailangan. Dapat imperative lang, dapat functional lang. Hindi maganda yung ganong approach. May mga tao gumagawa puro imperative, may mga tao gumagawa na functional, puro functional. There are cases na mas mabuting gawin yon, but in most cases, halo. Uh, hindi yung may iwasan na hindi gumamit ng imperative with most modern programming languages. And hindi rin advisable na puro imperative lang ang gagawin mo. Kaya, it's a mix. And as much as possible, prefer to use the functional approach. Yan, hindi yun na may mention masyado sa mga bagong programmers. Kaya, in the end, yun nga, hindi readable yung code, hindi manageable yung code, and masyadong complicated yung code. Okay, so that's yung two types of programming. And this wraps up yung intro natin to computer science. Pinakita natin ano yung ginagawa ng programmer at ano yung mga programs natin. However, pag titignan mo, umabot tayo ng 27, 28 plus minutes. Diniscuss natin kung ano yung programming. Pero, ang lumalabas dun, parang diniscuss natin yung, say, carpentry. Pero hindi natin diniscuss yung mga materyales tulad ng mga kahoy, ng simento. Hindi rin natin diniscuss yung mga ginagawa ng mga karpentero. Kunwari, yung pagpako, mga ganun bagay. Yun yung, when you compare it with computer science, parang diniscuss na natin paano yung, yung overview niya. You might think medyo weird siya, pero sa totoo lang, dapat ganun eh. Kasi yung normal na tao, pangkaraniwang yung madlang people, alam naman nila kung paano naggagawa yung mga karpentero, paano gumagawa sila ng bahay. Pero hindi alam ng madla kung ano yung ginagawa ng mga programmer. Kaya mas mabuti, i-discuss muna natin kung ano nga yung ginagawa namin mga developer. Kaysa naman, diretsyo na tayo dun sa kung ano yung ginagawa ng developer. Mas lalo lang kayong malilito. At hindi, hindi mabuti yun. <laughs> so, for the next two lessons, dun na tayo. We're going to discuss yung mga materyales at didiscuss na rin na yung mga gawain ng programmer. So, this is, this is going to be two tracks. Two simultaneous tracks. Pero mas mabuti unahin nyo yung data track. Yun yung... Input, ito yung output, ito yung mga data na pinaprocess natin sa mga programs natin. Doon natin i-discuss yun. And also, the other track, which is yung uh, structure. Kung ano na yung ginagawa natin sa mga programs natin. Ano yung sinusulat natin at ano yung mga nakikita nyo sa mga programs natin. So, yun yung mga ginagawa ng programmer. And, yun, that's it. Start off with the data track. You could do them ng sabay. Pero mas mabuti mag-umpisa kayo sa data track. Uh, kung tinatamad kayo mag 
Tapos yung date rock, may daya yun. May isang lesson doon na daya, i-discuss niya na sobrang brief na parang wala kayo gano'ng madutunan, pero at least may idea kayo para kayo dumiretso ka agad sa structure track. Anyway, yun lang. See you in those tracks.